Welcome everyone to the WrestlePod. Subscribe now for more pro wrestling and pop culture content. David Von Erich, also known as the Yellow Rose of Texas, was widely regarded as the most talented wrestler in the family due to his athleticism and charm. Born as David Allen Adkison on July the 22nd, 1958 in Dallas, Texas, he rose to fame in world-class championship wrestling where he challenged Harley Race and Ric Flair for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship several times. Despite never winning the belt, David's skills in the ring earned him a reputation as one of the best in the business. He also teamed up with his brothers Kevin and Kerry to face the fabulous Freebirds in historic feuds. David won the Missouri Heavyweight Championship on multiple occasions whilst wrestling in Missouri, and he also had a successful run as both a singles and tag team champion in the Florida Territory from late 1981 to mid-1982. Despite his professional successes, David's personal life was marked by tragedy. He married Candy McLeod on June 26, 1978, and they had a daughter named Natasha Zoena in October of the same year, who sadly died in infancy. David's marriage to Candy ended in divorce just a year later. He remarried three years later to Patricia A. Matter. I inform you of the tragedy that we all learned about yesterday. David Von Erich, being the wrestling star that he was, was on wrestling tour in Tokyo, Japan, and he passed away of an apparent heart attack yesterday in his hotel room. He was with friends and with good people. A few years later, on February the 10th, 1984, David Von Erich passed away in his hotel room in Tokyo, Japan. His death was a devastating blow to his fans and the wrestling community, as he was one of the most promising wrestlers of his generation. Fans of the Von Erichs, Cherie Savage and Michelle Scott, wrote a poem following David's death. David Von Erich, a courageous man, one who could understand life's meaning. He fought every battle till death won its victory. He was the greatest cowboy in all of Texas. Though I never knew him and he never knew me, I'm one of the most loyal fans through history. We send our deepest sympathies to the Von Erich family. And championship sports, along with all of the wrestlers and promoters throughout the world, uh, wish our deepest sympathy to the entire Von Erich family. The family is together. Uh, we know no more details about the death or any arrangements. We just wanted to take this time to inform you of what did happen. Our sincere sympathy to the Von Erich family. Soviet leader Yuri Apropov died Thursday, but with all due respects to Moscow and the Apropov family, it must be reported that, upon the news, our sports department received not a single phone call. The calls we got, the cries we heard, were instead for David Von Erich, who, at the age of 25, died Friday, doing a strange business in a strange land. And in a business that carves a firm edge between good and evil, people will tell you that Von Erich was as good as they come. Had David not died in Tokyo, he would have been the next NWA champion, says Michael Hayes. This tragic medical matter caused his organs to fill with blood and ultimately led to his untimely death at the age of 25. As a highly publicised figure, news of David's passing spread quickly and his fans were left devastated. With David, it was like a really low kick. Terrible. To this day, I'm not over that. Every death after it was just, oh, this again. Losing David, that one kind of burnt down the mission, you know. Despite the official cause of death, there are still some who believe that David may have died from a drug overdose. Ric Flair wrote in his autobiography that everyone in wrestling believes that it was a drug overdose that really killed him, and that Bruiser Brody disposed of the narcotics by flushing them down a toilet before the police arrived. Mystery continued to surround David's death as his father Fritz publicly rejected the coroner's report. Part of said report explained that David's body was found in a position which some speculated was an attempt to reach for the telephone in his hotel room. This led to widespread rumours that David's death couldn't have been a suicide and perhaps even something more sinister. To me and many others, sadly this position is horrific in a different way. A last minute change of mind from David as he faded away, perhaps regretting the decision he had made to end his life, or simply trying to call the hospital as he realised he was having a heart attack. But we must look at the official documents and always remember that this speculation does nothing to change the fact that the Von Erichs and wider wrestling world lost a promising young star far too soon. He told me he didn't feel like going, but he said, Dad, when I get there I'll be okay. 
I said, David, that's the way it is, son. You've got a contract. Those people over there have sold out a building to see a Von Eric. And he said, Dad, I'm going. It was Manning who led a silent tribute to Von Eric in the ring before Monday night's card. A yellow rose, David's favourite, lay at one end of the canvas, and the night's performers, the missing link, gorgeous Jim Garvin, Chris Adams, lined up shoulder to shoulder, good, evil, and Mundo Bizarro alike. Like wrestling's 21-gun salute, they clanged the ring bell ten times for David Von Eric, while a pretty teenager clutching her Kleenex and a greying lady clutching her granddaughter both wiped away tears. A special memorial episode of World Class was filmed a week after David's funeral, with Fritz and his son being interviewed while sitting in a peaceful location by the lake. In this episode, Fritz made an announcement that Kerry would be taking David's place in the upcoming title match with the aim of winning the championship as a tribute to David. A few months later, a tribute show was indeed held in David's honour, during which Kevin Von Erich won the NWA world title from Ric Flair. However, the celebrations felt hollow at the end. That was an ugly part. Kerry and I did not want to get into the ring. We were mourning David's death, but it was a family business and Dad was the business manager. Fritz's determination to keep the show on the road may seem a little harsh and cold in retrospect, but it appears as if this was simply a father coping with the horrendous situation of losing his second son. Fritz carried on doing the one thing he had control over, wrestling. Nobody knew what it was. He had a flu-type condition for about six weeks. But in our business, if you can walk, you go out there. You're expected to go out there. People have paid to see you. At least in our family, it's that way. <laughs> 